I don't know who or what made those tracks, but they're not ours. Wait a minute. I think I see something. Mother of God. Welcome back to Call of Plastic. Our mission is to recon the Dominator M60A2 battle tank from Timmy. It is believed to be the largest army man type tank that you can buy. This chunk of plastic is sure to crush anything in its path, featuring an elevating barrel, a rotating turret, commander cupola that also rotates, two hatches that open, rolling wheels, and a storage compartment in the back. Scanning for targets, target identified, bearing 086, Let's recon. The Dominator M60A2 Battle Tank. This is the type of toy that creates a core memory. When you get one of these, you will never forget it. And full disclosure, I'm not associated with Timmy in any way, but I just love what they're doing for the world of army men. The clean, crisp detailing and the amount of moving parts. The Dominator tank is ambitious and stirs the imagination. Moving on to the overview, here we see that the contents are quite simple. The tank is large enough to speak for itself, and the only thing extra that comes with it is the decal sheet and instructions on where the decals go. As for everything else, well, that's left up to you, how you want to accessorize it and how you want to implement it in the field of battle. Make no mistake about it, the Dominator lives up to its name, and it will surely dominate everything else in the backyard. And we charge on over to the inspection lineup where we get a full 360 degree view of this mammoth of a tank. The hull of the tank is actually based off of the M48 Patton. So in a way, you're kind of getting a massively upscaled M48. In real life, the M68 II was more of a, an exploratory design. And despite its awesomeness and its toy form, the real life version was mm, not as great. General Dynamics were certainly ambitious in their design features. They could fire conventional rounds, but also missile rounds. In essence, they really created a prototype. Very cool features, but not practical. Production began in 1975, and around 500 were built. And sometime later, it was deemed the Starship. That's a possible reference to the bridge of Starship Enterprise. Despite its real-world failures, this thing has been made into an outstanding toy. Let's have a closer look. So we'll start from the top down. Here we begin with the commander's cupola with the machine gun mounted on its right side. The commander's cupola can actually rotate about 90 degrees. So whereas this direction all the way left would be north, you rotate it all the way to the right, that would be east. As you can see here, there's a clean hull design, and that means the turret can rotate freely, no snags or hiccups. I just feel it's always important to point that out. Hopefully, you know, if you're designing tank toys, make sure you pay attention to that. The next component we move to is the barrel. This thing can be elevated up or down, and it actually has these three notch points. You have a high, middle, and low. Now let's take a look at the other side of the turret where we have a, another hatch. Now what's interesting about the M60A2 design was that every crew member had their own hatch and that was kind of an uncommon design feature. And we move on over to the driver's hatch here. That's right in the middle of the hole. And you can see here it simply slides back and forth. And you get a simple seat there in the bottom as well. Along the side skirts we have these crisp, broad, well-defined design features. Along the back side, you have the vents for where the radiator would be. And lo and behold, this thing is actually powered by an M48 Patton. Huh. 
Uh, that just goes to show the difference in size. You can actually fit an entire M48 Patton inside the back of this thing. We now take a look at the side. We have well-defined wheels. There's a well-defined suspension system. And in the wheels, you can see clearly defined lug nuts. And in this corner here, we have this nice star pattern. And if you look at the pattern, it, it's not quite lining up uh, with the treads here, but they did get it pretty close. That's what the other Timmy tanks. This thing is comprised of HTPE plastic and you can feel how incredibly redundant it is. So it's gonna stand up to some of the most spectacular battles you can have in your backyard or living room. The turret is held in place by again, this uh, lock washer type thing. Now that does appear to be metal to me. So as always, we wanna make sure that that gets dry. Uh, this tank design features three wheels. There's two on the front and there's one swivel wheel in the back. The two wheels on the front rotate just fine. They can be rolled easily. The one on the back can, it, it rolls, but it doesn't swivel uh, necessarily like it should. Now, before I uh, show you the swiveling action or the lack thereof, I do want to point out one thing that I noticed on the back of this wheel, uh, that is the swivel wheel. Uh, you had a small notch of excess plastic that was on there. And all I did was I took a simple file, a uh, very uh, light grit, and I ground that off. After I did that, it rolled uh, very easily on a solid surface as it should. But again, I uh, just want to point out that the swivel action uh, didn't quite function as intended. Now, despite the swivel wheel's uh, stubbornness, if you set it to move in the, in the direction that you want to move the tank, such as forward and backwards, the wheel will actually roll. It's just the swivel uh, won't work so much. Now that might not be every model, but that was my experience and I thought it was important to share that. Next, we move on to the size comparison. The Dominator comes in a 114 scale. It absolutely dwarfs the 148 scale of the Patton and even the 124 scale of the Bulldog. And it stands at a staggering nine and a quarter inches. Even the 118 action figures look small when next to this thing. So let's see what the Timmy Rifleman looks like. Here he is next to the Patton. Now to the Bulldog. Uh, and now this is him standing next to one of the wheel wells of the Dominator. So for your regular sized army man, your 135, your 132s, uh, Timmy's, BMC's, other brands, this thing is going to be an absolute behemoth on the battlefield. It's, it's like a huge mobile command unit. So here's a good angle of your 118 figures. And you can see here, there's five, six of them in the shot, and they're all dwarfed by the size of this tank. Such an impressive scale, and yet it's aesthetically versatile. It looks like an army man tank, but it's big enough to accommodate these larger action figures. And I wanna take a moment to discuss 118 figures. These particular figures feature detailing such as guns and equipment on their thighs. And that actually made it a little bit more difficult to fit inside here. As you can see here, I can get this guy almost all the way down until we get to his gun holster. And right there, it stops. And similarly, you have a, the same problem going on on the other side as far as his pant pocket. These are the uh, Elite Force Marine Force Recon from Sunny Days. And these they're highly detailed. I don't have anything against them. But I just wanted to point out that these models uh, may be a little bit more difficult to actually fit inside the tank if you're looking for uh, guys that are inside operating the tank. Uh, you might want to go for uh, units that are a little bit slimmer or that have less equipment around the thighs. And I was able to get one of these guys down into the driver's seat, but he's not able to go all the way down. And you can see it kind of obstructs the turret a little bit. Now, there is one other solution to this small problem, and that is you, you could potentially modify the hatches. You could open them up a little bit and make them a little bit broader, and then you could easily fit these guys in. All right, despite the hatches there, you can definitely put a handful of 118 guys in the back with room to spare. So this thing can also double as a troop transport. We've just reconned the Dominator M60A2 Starship Battle Tank. This is an impressive work of plastic 
and it was an absolute delight to recon this with you. If you found this review entertaining and helpful, please like, comment, and subscribe. We are amassing an army of dedicated subscribers. For Call of Plastic, I'm Bill Greenwater. We'll see you soon.